Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. Your ability to properly assess a drone operation's airspace and proximity to aerodromes is absolutely crucial to safe and legal flying in Canada. Let's get into it. The current Canadian ARPES regulations contain distinct rules for operating drones in three areas, in controlled airspace, in restricted airspace, and near aerodromes. And we're going to walk through each of those three areas to understand what they are, and what the regulations are, and what that means for you as a drone pilot. Controlled airspace is defined around airports and the air traffic routes between them. These are the areas where aircraft movements are being monitored and controlled by control towers. The structure of airspace is often described as an upside down wedding cake because the drum shaped classes of airspace increase in size as you go higher above the ground. Airspace is labeled as class A, B, C, D, and E, generally from the highest to the lowest, plus there's a class F airspace in Canada. Everything else, in other words, uncontrolled airspace, is called Class G. The precise locations, dimensions, and altitudes of all of this wedding cake is defined in a NAV Canada document called the Designated Airspace Handbook, or DAH. This can get very complicated, but fortunately, we drone pilots operate only in the lowest control zones and in fact, only in the lowest parts of these zones. And of course, we also operate in Class G airspace. The low-level control zones we normally could be flying in are Class C, D, or E, depending upon the size of the controlling airport. There are only 21 airports with Class C control zones, 30 with Class D, and about 100 Class E's in Canada. So about 150 in total. Note that uncontrolled airspace though, Class G, also contains many, many aerodromes, heliports, grass fields, all sorts of stuff, and lots and lots of manned air traffic. Just because you're flying in Class G airspace does not mean you won't encounter manned aircraft. Here are three examples of control zones, Class C, D, and E, across Canada. A couple of things to note. First of all, notice that the control zones are much larger than the three nautical mile drone keepout zones around the airports themselves. Those keepout zones are the smaller pink circles in, in these three examples. A lot of people are confused about these two notions. They are completely different. The drone keepout zone, which we'll talk about in a second, and the control zone are completely separate concepts. The control zone itself is usually much larger seven nautical miles in radius in fact that's 13 kilometers for both Edmonton and Sudbury even though Sudbury is a much smaller airport the other thing to note is that the control zones are not always round Kelowna BC in this middle example has this peculiar shape and here's Toronto three separate control zones that merge into this large shape enveloping most of the city Certainly many newcomers to the drone hobby are surprised by the extent of these control zones and the fact that they start at the ground. By the way, all of these screenshots are taken from the Drone Pilot Canada app. You can see that not only does it show the airports and control zones and other things like restricted zones and provincial parks, but also a quick tap on the map displays all the key information you need to know for that spot what the area is, a quick reminder of the rules for both basic and advanced operations, which we'll get into in a second, and contact numbers. So what are the rules for flying your drone in controlled airspace? For basic operations pilots, controlled airspace is a complete no-fly zone. For advanced operations pilots, there are two requirements. First, you need to be flying a drone approved for flying in controlled airspace. There's a list on the Transport Canada Drone Safety webpage. And you need to have an approved NAV Canada RPAS flight authorization request. These approvals are done on a permission basis, must be done in advance, 
and require you to provide lots of details of your mission and your safety procedures. The approval form itself is available on the NAV Canada webpage. The Drone Pilot Canada app actually sets these forms up for you in seconds. I'm showing the regulation number here, by the way, and on other pages in this video, in case you want to read the details. Okay, number two area is restricted airspace. Class F restricted airspace is established around sensitive facilities and locations like Parliament Hill, Rideau Hall, prisons and penitentiaries, sites like Niagara Falls and the Confederation Bridge to PEI, as well as a number of military testing zones and weapons ranges. Class F restricted zones each have a number that starts with the letters CYR, then three digits. I emphasize the R because there are other Class F zones that are advisory only, and they start with CYA. All these zones are defined in that good document, the DAH. There's about a hundred of them, and they're also shown in the Drone Pilot Canada app. You should be aware that not all Class F restricted zones appear on the DJI FlySafe maps that you use to fly your drone. Be careful. Here are three interesting examples. I thought the Joyceville Prison would be a fun one to start with, my personal favorite prison, located near Kingston, Ontario. Next is the huge Cold Lake Weapons Range in northern Alberta. And finally, the Confederation Bridge, linking New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island. Class F restricted zones come in all shapes and sizes. Drone flights in any of these Class F restricted zones are prohibited, even for sub 250 gram drones, unless you have permission from the user or controlling agency listed in the DAH. And if the zone is inside controlled airspace, you also need to meet those requirements. As I mentioned, Class F advisory airspace is okay for drone flights as long as you fly with extreme caution. Okay, now let's tackle the third area, drone operations near aerodromes. And let's start with the definition of an aerodrome. Basically, an aerodrome is anywhere used to land, take off, or service an aircraft. Here's the legal definition down here, if you happen to like sentences ending with therewith. From a drone pilot's perspective, there are four kinds of aerodromes to worry about, each with slightly different rules. The first kind is military aerodromes. These are air bases or other military facilities operated by the Department of National Defense. There are 22 of these scattered across Canada, and they're all listed in the CFS, the Canada Flight Supplement, which is a set of regularly updated documents published by NAV Canada listing all the details for every military, certified, or registered land aerodrome in Canada. There is also a WAS document, Water Aerodrome Supplement, listing all water-based seaplane bases. As it happens, there's no military seaplane bases. The second kind of aerodrome is certified aerodromes, and these are the places that are officially called airports or heliports, if you see the term airport or heliport in a regulation, they are referring only to certified aerodromes. Again, these are listed in either the CFS or WAS, and there are about 500 of these across Canada. Only a couple of certified water aerodromes, though, as it happens. Next is registered aerodromes. These are any aerodrome listed out in either the CFS or WAS, but they're not certified nor military. There's lots of these, about 1,400 in fact. Finally, there is everything else. Abandoned airfields, grassy strips, and even lakes. These are not in the CFS or WAS, but are still legitimate aerodromes that drone pilots need to be aware of. Now we'll walk through each of these kinds of aerodromes so you can properly identify them and understand the applicable drone regulations. I'll also show you an example of each kind. Drone operations near military aerodromes. Now that's a scary thought. Well, maybe you'll need to do this one day, so here we go. You can identify military aerodromes because they will say DND in the OPR, or Operator, section of their CFS listing. They have a drone restricted zone 
three nautical miles or 5.6 kilometers in radius from the center of the airbase. And it's three nautical miles even if it's just a heliport, which is different from, from certified airports, which we'll see in a minute. For basic operations drone pilots, this is a no-fly zone. Simple as that. Advanced operations pilots may fly in this restricted zone, but only if they have an SFOC, Special Flight Operations Certificate, in place for the mission. And if the aerodrome is also in controlled airspace, which most of them are, you must also meet the requirements for controlled airspace. Here's an example, Dwyer Hill, Ontario, the home base for Joint Task Force 2. There's a heliport located on the base, and as you can see in the OPR listing from the CFS, DND is clearly identified. And even though this is just a heliport, there's a three nautical mile restricted zone around the site, as well as a class F restricted zone inside. That's the squarish area showing in Drone Pilot Canada. In this case, there is no other controlled airspace around the area. Next, drone operations around certified aerodromes. You can identify these because they have the abbreviation CERT in the OPR, or Operator, section of their CFS listing. There's a drone restriction zone of 3 nautical miles, or 5.6 kilometers, around airports, and 1 nautical mile, or 1.9 kilometers, around heliports. For basic operations drone pilots, these zones are no-fly zones. For advanced operations pilots, you must contact the aerodrome, and, assuming they give you permission, coordinate your mission following their procedures for locations, altitudes, and perhaps the timing of your flight. The operator for each certified airport or heliport is listed in the CFS and the Drone Pilot Canada app. And as usual, if the aerodrome is also in controlled airspace, then you must meet all the requirements for controlled airspace as well, such as the NAV Canada RPAS flight authorization request. Here's an example of a certified aerodrome, the Windsor, Ontario Airport. As you can see, the magic word CERT appears in the operator section of the CFS listing, and you can see the operator name and phone number to contact for permission. And here's the three nautical mile drone restricted zone, and in this case, it overlaps with a larger Class D controlled airspace. Next, drone operations near registered aerodromes. Registered aerodromes are the next tier down in the hierarchy of life of aerodromes. They're listed in the CFS or WAS and have the abbreviation REG in the OPR section of their listing. From a drone flight perspective, they are considered caution areas only, and you must keep your drone away from manned aircraft and the aircraft traffic patterns around these aerodromes, particularly the ends of runways, or in the case of heliports or seaplane bases, standard approach patterns applicable to these aerodromes. So from a regulations perspective, both basic and advanced operations pilots must fly with increased caution, since there is a higher risk of encountering manned aircraft. And again, if the aerodrome happens to be in controlled airspace, then you must still meet the requirements for that controlled airspace. Here's an example of a registered aerodrome, the Bob Cajun Aerodrome in the Coarthas. You can see the keyword REG in the operator section of its CFS listing and the yellow circle showing in the Drone Pilot Canada app. By the way, we chose to portray the caution area as a simple caution circle in the app, but you may notice these areas are what I call runway sausages in the NRC drone site selection tool. In either case, they are indicating caution only. Finally, let's talk about other aerodromes. There are literally thousands of non-certified and unregistered aerodromes in Canada where you may encounter low-flying aircraft, including private runways for ultralights, open fields for perhaps crop dusters, lakes with seaplanes, and abandoned or defunct airfields. None of these places are flagged as aerodromes on official maps, although you might spot them on Google. For drone operations, the rule is simple. All drone pilots must be vigilant to these possibilities and stay out of the way and yield to 
manned aircraft at all times. Let's quickly summarize airspace and aerodromes. Controlled airspace, Class F restricted airspace, military aerodromes, and certified airports and heliports are all no-fly zones for basic operations drone pilots. For pilots with their advanced certification, flights are possible in these areas with various degrees of permission required. In addition to these, you need to be aware of registered aerodromes and the possibility of unlisted aerodromes in the area of your flight and stay way out of the way of manned aircraft. Well, there we have it. Airspace and aerodromes from a drone pilot's perspective. What they are and what you need to know in order to fly safely and legally in Canada. If you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below. Please subscribe to my channel and ring that bell for notifications of future videos. Thanks for watching.